Now many of us, we all know the situation today in Sham. We've seen the reports, we've seen the news stories, we've seen the videos, we've seen a video right now to make us understand what our brothers and sisters are facing in that land. But many of us do not know why the land of Asham is so special. Many of us think that possibly these brothers are facing, these sisters are facing tests. Why? As a punishment or is it as a test? We're not too sure. We're not too sure of what will affect the land of Asham from the light of the Quran and Hadith in future as well. What is in store for the land of Asham? One of the very few lands that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned in numerous traditions. And in fact, before him, even Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has mentioned by reference in the Quran is the land of Sham, which is now the land of Syria and Jordan and Lebanon and Palestine. And this land, clearly our tradition, our religion has emphasized it like it has emphasized no other land after the land of Hijaz. And there is no question that Mecca and Medina, the land of Hijaz is the most sacred land on earth. But after the land of Hijaz comes the land of Sham, the land of Syria. The name is Sham. During the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during the time of the Sahaba, during the time of the Tabi'een, this land, this entire land was called a Sham before it was divided. It wasn't divided by the Muslims. Before it was divided, this whole land was called a Sham. And Sham includes not only Syria. Sham includes the occupied territories of Palestine. And let's call it Palestine here, not Israel. Occupied territories of Palestine. Palestine, Syria, parts of Lebanon, parts of Jordan, parts of Iraq. In fact, a lot of Iraq, if not most of it or all of it, was included in the land of Asham. So this was the land of Asham during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself praises it in the Quran in the beginning of Surah Al-Isra when he says Subhana alladhi asra bi 'abdihi laylan min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa alladhi barakna hawla Masjid al-Aqsa the land of which we have blessed that is around it Allah says that Masjid al-Aqsa is holy and not just the masjid the land around the masjid is holy what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He speaks about the blessed night journey of Mi'raj and Isra. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the miraculous journey to go from where to where? Lifted from Makkah with the angel Jibra'il alayhi salam. He went and he made the miraculous night journey. He came to Masjid al-Aqsa where he led the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam in Salah. And then he ascended the heavens. Now, which, what was this land? It was the land of Masjid al-Aqsa. And our Prophet sallallahu wa said in a famous hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Allahumma barik lana fi madinatina. Oh Allah, bless us in our Medina. Wa fi muddina wa sa'ina. And in the measurements of our city. Wa fi shamina. And bless us in our sham. And what is amazing about this hadith is that when the Prophet sallallahu wa made this dua, sham was not under Islamic control. Sham was not even in the hands of the Muslims. Look at this dua. Sham was not in the hands of the Muslims. Sham was in the hands and in the control of the Christians. It was part of the Byzantine Empire. When was Sham conquered? We know these brothers. Sham was conquered during the Khilaf uh, Umar radiallahu anh that many of the trials and tribulations are linked to the land of Sham in the prophetic tradition. And of them is the famous tradition of Isa ibn Maryam coming down upon the white minaret in the city of Damascus in the land of Sham. And we all know that towards the end of time, world events, as events will pan out, the entire events in the light of Quran and Hadith, we all, we all know that it will be focused around the land of Asham. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Satakunu jundun bil Iraq, wa jundun bil Yemen, wa jundun bil Sham. There's going to be three major armies in the world that are fighting each other an army from Iraq, and an army from Yemen, and an army from Sham. So this is going to be a, a major civil war between the Muslims, a major catastrophe that's going to take place. And this is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. Rasulullah informed us, the Ardul Mahshar Abdul Shah, that the place of the final gathering of the Mu'mineen, 
Where will the Mu'mineen be gathered finally? Before the world is destroyed and dunya is destroyed, it will be the land of Ashab. The meaning of Mahshar here is the worldly gathering together before the Day of Judgment. The very last group of believers that will be on this earth before the Day of Judgment will be in Ard sham It will be in the land of Sham. And therefore, the land of Sham will be the very last land that has Muslims on it uh, right before the end of times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause a fragrance and a wind to blow in the land of Asham, such a fragrant smell which will take the souls of the believers peacefully. And this will be right before the trumpet is blown. And so when the trumpet is blown, the believers will not hear it because the wind from Sham would have taken them away and they would die when they smell this beautiful scent coming from Sham and from this region of Sham. This will be the end of the Muslims on earth and there will then be a group that are the worst of mankind like animals. They will act and interact and that will be the generation upon which uh, the trumpet is blown.